What's going on guys and welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Theo and today I'm going to be sharing my EDC bag loadout. My carry does change quite frequently and I do have more than a couple bags, but today I'll be showing off my current setup and what I've got in it as a college student. I'll do my best to outline some of the basic pros and cons of my gear, as well as how they plan to practical use on campus. Starting with my bag itself, I'm currently rocking the GORUCK GR1 21 liter in wolf grey. GORUCK isn't a household name by any means, but they're a familiar name in the backpacking community. GR1 has a clean, understated appearance in its wolf grey colorway. This is really important to me because I don't want a bag that screams military or tactical, especially on campus where people are sensitive to that stuff. A key selling point for me was how fundamentally overbuilt the GR1 is. The backpack, or ruck as Goak would call it, is made of 1000D Cordero, which is an extremely tough, abrasion-resistant fabric. It's also very water-resistant, which is nice since it's been raining much more than usual where I live. There are other backpacks out there of equal quality, like my Triple Ot Design Lightspeed, which incidentally uses the same material, but anecdotally I will say that the GR1 feels much more rugged. In practice, while I'm a bit rough on my backpacks, I don't foresee myself ever wearing the GR1 now. This is a bag that will really last you decades, even if you put it through hell. The biggest turnoff to most people about the GR1 is going to be the price. This iteration of the bag currently retails for a whopping $395. That's definitely not worth it in my opinion, as good as this bag is. I'd highly recommend picking up the GR1 during one of their big sales, and they offer very generous earned service discounts, and with my student discount, I believe I paid somewhere around $250 for the GR1, which is a fair price considering the buy it for life nature of this bag. You could literally buy a GR1 and never need to buy another backpack. They also have a ridiculously generous lifetime warranty program called SCARS. The price point aside, some of the more nuanced drawbacks of the GR1 include the weight and lack of versatility. Cordura is extremely tough, but it also weighs a lot. An empty this backpack weighs about three pounds. Over time, you definitely get used to this, and whenever I pick up one of my friend's bags, I'm always surprised by how light and flimsy their bag feels. On the topic of versatility, while there are mole attachment points all around the bag, accessories don't integrate as seamlessly as they do with something like the light speed. And as I mentioned earlier, I prefer a clean, understated look, so the poor integration of external accessories in the GR1 is a bit of a turnoff for me. This bag is clearly not for everyone, and I would hazard against buying it if you work in an office or maybe don't get out too often. I also think it's important to highlight that Goak is selling you a brand experience just as much as they are selling you a backpack. The warranty on this backpack, as well as GORUCK customer service in general, are nothing short of exemplary. They regularly hold challenges and events which are ran by Real Special Forces Cadre and are designed to mimic some of the harshest of training environments. In essence, these bags have a proven track record for being some of, if not the toughest, built bags out there. Moving on to what I've got inside the bag, first up is this feel pocket that I purchased along with the GR1. You can see that it attaches via Molly to the inside of the backpack. Because of how simple the layout of the GR1 is, it really pays to have additional room for organization. And as a student, I carry around a lot of electronic devices and other gadgets, so this is mainly where they go. In the zipper mesh pocket, I have a basic first aid kit for minor bumps and scrapes. I put the first aid kit in this particular pocket because I want it to be easily visible in the event that someone has to grab a band-aid from it. In the mesh outer pocket, I carry my chapstick, which is a big go-to for me. There's so many uses for chapstick, and it's really something I always recommend carrying. In the last pocket, I've got my power bank and cables. While I scarcely need to use these because of how many outlets there are on campus, they are nice to have handy. My power bank of choice is the Anchor Power Core 10,000. It's got plenty of juice to charge my phone, the iPhone X, a couple times over and then some. I've only got one cable in here, but that's all I need. This is the Nomad Universal Cable, and as you can see, it's compatible with USB-A, USB-C, and Lightning. I used to carry separate cables, and this has really helped me save a little bit of space. The final thing I've got in the field pocket is an Anchor Power Port 2. It's got two ports, which is cool if I need to charge more than one device at a time. There are two other main pockets inside the GR1 itself. In the upper one, I like to carry my organizer from Urban EDC Supply. This is their hybrid or medium-sized model. I don't like to carry my pockets completely loaded with stuff, and the organizer is great for keeping my stuff from free-floating and smacking against each other. In it, I have a Field Notes notebook, my pen of choice, the Urban Survival Gear tie scribe, and my backup flashlight, the Freelux Synergy 1. I believe I have reviews to all of these if you're interested in checking them out, so I'll link those up above. Now, in the bottom pocket, all I carry is a beanie from Triple Ot Design. This is one of those things that I bought on a whim, but I found it to be quite handy when I'm riding my bike at night. The bottom pocket is also where I'll throw my calculator, which I don't have with me right now because I'm on break. Next up in my bag are my headphones. These are the Bose QC35 II, and they're great noise-canceling headphones. I'm not an audio file by any means, but I do appreciate good sound, and these quite fit the bill. The controls on the headphone are simple, yet very intuitive. The headphones come with a soft carry case, which I just throw underneath the field pocket, generally. Right next to my headphone case, I like to put my water bottle. I'm currently rocking a 17-ounce bottle from Microlite that I picked up at OER during a sale. It's a very slim bottle, which is my preferred form factor. I think a water bottle is really an essential when you're running between classes. On top of the water bottle and headphones goes my iPad. The iPad is a 2017 iPad Pro 10.5 inch in the 64 gigabyte version. I really wish I went with this 256 gigabyte model now because it's what I pretty much edit everything on. It's not a laptop replacement typing wise, but it does most of what I need to do. I've got the OtterBox Defender case on it because it gets banged around a ton. 
I think I bought this one new, other off of eBay for like $450 over a year ago, and it was pretty much a steal in my opinion. That said, I'm thinking about selling it and moving on to the new iPad Mini 5 just because I like the size format better. Now you might be wondering, where are all your textbooks? The truth is a good majority of stuff is digital nowadays. I found that I rarely need to take more than my iPad with me to class, although I will sometimes take my laptop case depending if I need to do some typing. On the topic of my laptop, my laptop of choice is the MacBook Air 11.6 inch from 2015. It's definitely not the most powerful laptop out there. In fact, it's downright maniacal by most standards, but I don't do much on it. The most I need it for is typing and light web browsing. This is probably going to be my laptop for the next few years or so, and I carry it in a triple alt design transport sleeve, which is made out of X-Pack and Hypalon. You'll notice that there's also an accessory compartment that's been gusseted for the charger or other accessories. This all goes in the laptop compartment of the GR1, which is already pretty beefy and has a false bottom, but I do like peace of mind. I've also swapped out the plastic frame sheet for a ballistic panel from Angel Armor. This is a soft diameter panel, which is apt considering the bag already weighs quite a lot, and it's good for most handgun rounds, but not rifle rounds. This is one of those things that I think we can all agree is better to have and not need than to need and not have. I wouldn't say I'm paranoid by any means, but rather prepared. And hey, when I say this bag is bulletproof, I'm not kidding. The final pocket on the GR1 is this outer slash pocket. This is intended to be a quick access pocket, but because of the way the bag is designed, it can be hard to access if you've completely packed the inside of the bag. But that said, I generally just keep my keys and headphones in this pocket, so it's not a big deal. Sometimes I'll also throw in a snack or something for later too. I haven't done much to the outside of the bag. The first thing I've added is some light strap cleanup using ITW web dominators. These little guys are very handy for extra strap length, and they can even double as a water bladder tube holder. You can see that the GR1 has webbing on the strap that you can attach a dominator to. At the top of the backpack attached to the handle, I've put a small hero clip. You don't realize how handy this thing is until you have one. It's great for when you're in the bathroom and you don't want to leave your bag on the floor. Honestly, that's the best use I've found for it, but it does have a lot of other applications from what I've seen. Last thing I've added to the outside of my backpack is a patch. I believe this one is from Triple Alt Design and I like how it blends in nicely with the gray colorway. I have some other patches, but they're a bit more childish and they don't fit nearly as well. I do wish that there was more patch space like with the light speed. And that's going to cover pretty much everything I've got inside my bag currently. Bear in mind that I do have a few other bags and I switch it up every now and then. The GR1 is probably my favorite backpack, but if you guys are interested in seeing my other loadouts, please do let me know. A lot of work goes into making these videos in particular, so be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed watching and to subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching and checking out my loadout with me. Peace.